Hey everybody, welcome to Celebration Bar Review. We're counting down to your bar exam and we're now at about 50 to 52 days away from the test. This is when I would like you to be watching this video. So it's certainly growing ever closer, isn't it? For most people, this week that we just finished was a pretty interesting one, I think, in terms of your studies. I've certainly seen a big uptick in the number of student contacts uh, with respect to writing conferences, uh, to people going onto the Facebook group, talking about uh, their studies, working on their studies, uh, just generally beginning to get more active and more involved, certainly picking up the number of hours that they're studying in many cases. It's also a time when I find a lot of students naturally, and I think understandably, start looking for what I would describe as the easy fix. Now, you know, I talk in these messages a lot about uh, working out. And if you uh, know some of the older messages, I used to work out with a personal trainer and I hated that. It was really tough for me. Now I'm more of the walk to get my coffee kind of a guy. But in any event, if you looked back and you could find the old pictures and the older videos of me, you'd see that I really was much heavier than I am even today. Um, I've lost a lot of weight over the years and I've done it pretty much the old fashioned way. I've worked hard at training and getting exercise, going out and doing the right things, trying to eat better, um, doing the things you're supposed to do. But like everyone else, uh, I grew very weary of having to actually go into the gym. I'm certainly not fond of the gym. I'm not anything even close to an athlete or a gym rat. And I kept thinking to myself during that time when I was going to all those workouts, there has to be some pill you can take. I mean, I'm a child of the 60s. There has to be some easy fix. You know, something that I see advertised on television. I'll just do that thing. And then if I do that, everything's going to be fine. It'll all be good. All that belly flap will go away. I'll just do a better job of what I was doing before that wasn't working. Now, Clearly, there's a reason we only videotape from like here up, you know, so that you can't see my stomach. Uh, but the point is that in my view, the world would be better if I could just find that really easy fix. Now, my trainer during that time, uh, in her wisdom, pointed out that, of course, there was no such thing as an easy fix. And the only long lasting results, the only really valuable results, were the ones that you work at, that you earn. And they come when you change your lifestyle, when they change your habits, when it becomes important to you. So today, for example, I walk almost 15,000 steps a day. It's not because I have to do it, it's because it's part of my lifestyle. I've turned it into something that's just part of my day. And obviously, when you're talking about health, it's not a matter of doing a better job of exercising or a better job of dieting. It's literally doing something different. It's changing what you do. Well, as you might imagine, that got me to thinking about the bar exam and the bar review for you as we get closer to the exam. As I said earlier, I think this is a time when a lot of bar takers start thinking to themselves, I wish there was an easier way, some easy fix, some easy way to study and pass the bar. Isn't there something easy I could do that would just make everything work better for me? Couldn't I just uh, take a three-day cram course or read a really short outline or look at a couple of sample questions or essays? Couldn't I just get better at using IRAC and issue spotting? Couldn't I get better at doing multiple choice questions? Wouldn't that be enough? And here's the really hard truth for most people. It isn't enough. Better doesn't work. You don't need to do a better job of these things. You need to do something different. When we start looking for quick fixes, easy solutions, particularly in this phase of the study with about a little under two months to go, um, when you start looking for quick fixes, you're bound to get yourself into trouble. Now look, it, there's some really good reasons for that. The bar examiners, to say, state the obvious, are not stupid people. They recognize that in order to take the bar exam, you had to go to law school somewhere. You had to work through that process in order to become uh, a member of the profession who's qualified to sit for the exam. Therefore, the test has to adequately reflect the skills that you're going to need when you become a member of the bar. Those skills no longer include the ability to memorize and recite law. You've heard me talk about that in a number of settings. But today, you can ask Google or Siri or Alexa or whatever the uh, particular intelligent assistant of the day is for the rule against perpetuities and get it spit back out at you. You don't pay a lawyer $300 an hour for that information. What do you pay the lawyer for? Well, you pay them to analyze that rule, to be able to apply it and use it, to be able to show the skills that would make you a valued counselor. Therefore, the test has to adequately reflect the skills that you're going to need when you become a member of the bar. And if it were such that one could do that on the basis of just a few days of study, well, it would hardly be much of a test. It wouldn't be much of a hurdle. 
And truthfully, in the same way that there are really almost jurisdictions where you can apprentice your way into the bar, um, there are increasingly higher standards to pass and become a member of the bar. Now, you may disagree with those standards. You may think the test is unfair, and in some places and in some ways, I, don't, I wouldn't disagree with that. But the reality is that the bar examination reflects a growing change in reality in the practice of law today. And that growing change in reality is that right now, students have to be able to analyze and interpret and use the law, not just memorize it. And I think that if the test measures that skill, then it's doing its job. And if it didn't, it would be a legitimate concern on the part of the public and the bar. Now, as a result, when people who are taking the bar start looking for these easy fixes or quick fixes, or worse yet, they, they go on eBay or Craigslist or wherever that they're looking on the internet, and they, they're they taking what now is called a bar review uh, or what passes for a bar review. Uh, it's pretty scary to me. These are things that typically don't get you through the exam. They're just gimmicks. You know, read my magic outline and you'll pass the bar. Get my 150 flashcards and you can pass the bar. I mean, are you kidding me? Nobody in their right mind would expect that to work, except a crazed, desperate bar taker who's looking for a better way to do what already didn't work. The reality is that there's so much out there in the way of all these gimmicks that people start fumbling around in the dark. And this is a time when that fumbling starts to happen. Now, it reminds me in some strange way, probably a Freudian manner, uh, about an old Broadway musical called Pajama Game. Now, I admit, most of you have never heard of Pajama Game, but for those of you that have, it was, a, I think, a 1940s or 50s kind of musical. It ran on Broadway for years, and I think virtually every high school in America has done at least three or four versions of it since they've been open. In any event, there's a scene in the pajama game in which there are some characters, and they're at a speakeasy, I think during the Prohibition era, and it's pitch dark. You can't see anything on stage. All you can do is hear these voices in the dark as they're all fumbling around. And throughout all of this, you hear one guy walking around going, Hey, Boopsie! 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 I don't know, for a minute or two asking for Boopsie. Pretty sexist name, but remember what we're talking about, the 20s and 30s and 40s. Anyway, you keep hearing this one guy move around the stage, and he says, Boopsie, Boopsie, is that you, Boopsie? Finally, you hear him go, Boopsie! And then you hear another voice go, Hey, Mac, this ain't no Boopsie. See, I think bar takers are a little bit like the guy in the speakeasy. They're stumbling around in the dark. They're going, Boopsie, Boopsie, is there a bar review solution here? Boopsie, Boopsie, is there anything that'll help me? Boopsie, Boopsie. And then what they find out is, hey, Mac, this ain't no boopsie. You can't do the same old thing. The only way that you can really prepare for the exam is to do the work. And to do it in our course means to do things differently. It means to photo read or read quickly. It means to listen and watch the lectures. And it means to do the question practice as it's outlined for you in steps. When it comes to writing your essays, uh, it means to write in the way that we talk about with fact, law, an application, not just cram, recite, and memorize, or IRAC, or something else. And the point is that when you hear about somebody's streamlined course, or somebody's generic bar course, or somebody's generic quick fix to solve all your bar review ills, I want you to think about all of those diet pills that were supposed to take inches and pounds off you without exercise. When I was a little kid, there was a thing, a, a belt that you wrapped around your waist and it was on a vibrator and it was supposed to burn all the fat off uh, because it just uh, vibrated around your stomach. I don't know. I mean, crazy, isn't it? Uh, but it sounded great at the time and everybody had one as far as I knew. We certainly had one in our house. The point is, today there are all the kinds of gimmicks out there, and some of them sound great, uh, some of them have brilliant marketing, uh, and there are people who make a lot of money doing that. I'm not sure who makes more, the, the people that sell quick fix diets or the people that sell quick fix bar reviews, but the reality is the same in both cases. There are no quick fixes. There are no easy solutions that don't come without effort and work. I guess what I'm really saying this week is that as you work, as you struggle and sweat, sometimes metaphorically, maybe uh, sometimes uh, just uh, literally, you should recognize that the value of what you're doing is the growth and the change uh, in what's going to happen for you as a student, as a bar taker. And what we want is change that really lasts. We don't want a better version. We want something completely new. That's what's valuable. It's what will get you through the bar exam. The people trying to find the quick fix, they're just looking for their own version of boopsie. Hey, Mac, this ain't no boopsie. Uh, I hope this is a good week for you coming up in your studies. I hope that you uh, make it a productive one. I'll be back to you again next week uh, as we continue our countdown to your bar exam. 
Take care.